Basketball seasons in full swing and both basketball programs are in for a test this weekend. Thank you for joining the Red Raider Nation on a Friday. I'm Ryan King. Starting off with the men's team, Coach Beard and the gang got a huge win over the hater of dancing, Bob Huggins and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Their first win in Morgantown ever. But in the loaded Big 12 Conference, it never gets any easier. The Red Raiders welcome in the team pick second in the Big 12 preseason poll, the Kansas State Wildcats. K-State's currently staying at 10 and 3, but without two of their senior starters, Kamau Stokes and Dean Wade. Still a deep experienced team that, just like Tech, is off an Elite Eight appearance just last season. In a conference as deep as the Big 12, winning your home games is a huge key to staying competitive. That challenge begins tomorrow at 1 on ESPNU. They don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. If you're going to score a basket against K-State, you better go earn it. And if you're going to get a stop against K-State, you have to make a play defensively to do that. So, um, again, you know, maybe the best defensive team in college basketball, a uh, team on offense that shares the ball, takes good shots. They don't beat themselves. Um, and then, like you said, they have a lot of experience. These are guys that every guy on their teams played in meaningful games. Uh, most of their guys were on that Elite Eight team last year. So, um, I think this is one of the best teams in our conference, which translates to being one of the best teams in college basketball. The Lady Raiders opened up Big 12 play on the road as well, but lost a heartbreaker at the Oklahoma Sooners. The Lady Raiders led for 35 minutes of the game, but the Sooners took their first lead with about four and a half minutes to go and stole the victory. While there are plenty of positives to point to, including Chrislyn Carr and Brittany Brewer both scoring in double digits, Coach Stallings can point to the fact that her team was in this game and had a legitimate chance to win the Big 12 opener on the road. Now the main focus is taking that next step from fighting and being right in the game to finishing the fight in crunch time. We have to finish the game and, you know, teaching moment for us, tough teaching moment, you know, that, that one stung quite a bit. But the teaching moment is that, you know, we have to go into these games prepared to play 40 plus minutes. No one at this level is going to, to roll over. Even though you've led the entire game, they're going to continue to fight, 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 just as we would in the reverse. Um, and you have to finish it off. We played 36 minutes and sadly we lost the game in four minutes of that entire game. Oklahoma never let up and they were down a majority of that game and then they were able to persevere and that's something that we have to learn as well is to play 40 plus minutes and we didn't do that but the great thing about it is that in Big 12 play you get to play a team twice and possibly three times so um, we have a big one coming up with Baylor on Sunday and we have to learn from it. Multiple sources including the West Virginia Metro News reporting that Troy head coach and former Texas Tech offensive coordinator Neil Brown will take the West Virginia job at least at this point he's linked to it. Matt Moore his offensive coordinator also coached at Tech more than likely be going with him. And I was thinking about this earlier. I don't know if I can remember this many coaching changes in the Big 12 in recent memory with four there's of them all right. It's almost, there's only yeah. 10 teams. It's a small conference. It's almost half the league is turned over. Mm. So it's a lot of change for next season. Yeah, be interesting to see fun. what happens. It does. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back.